Some maybe hour and a half later, I said, Srila Prabhupada, may I take a cigarette break? <laughs> he picked his head around the corner and said, go wash your hands. It was then that Srila Prabhupada told me about the four rules and regulations. And that when we cook for Krishna, this is the beginning of the quality of purity. Beginning first instruction on the quality of purity. Some three hours later, maybe it was close to five hours I was making kachorias, I said, um, oh no, I was, it was very hot in the room and I took my arm and I wiped my forehead and Srila Prabhupada saw it and he said, go wash your hands. So he began to explain first, first idea of cleanliness. He said, when you, we cook for Krishna, we wear clean clothes. Our clothes don't come in contact with the... Do you need something? Oh. Um, we don't uh, allow the clothes to touch Krishna. We wear clean clothes only when cooking for Krishna. In this way, in the first, very first day, Srila Prabhupada began to give me some little instruction. And over the next 12 years, 11 years, excuse me, I had the fortune of uh, many different situations where Srila Prabhupada gave me some little training in this art of cooking for Krishna. So how many people in this audience have rendered some personal service to their lordships in Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Mandir by doing some cooking for their pleasure? Please raise your hand. A rather small group. I am sure that the standard that, that you have established here is perhaps the highest in ISKCON, especially with the, the guidance of the two saintliest pujaris in ISKCON. But there are many places where, especially in the West, it's very hard to engage in the simplest kind of instructions. I had one piece of paper. Typing, ah, there it is. I wanted to read to you um, a, a couple points that Srila Prabhupada said into a letter in 1968. This is only two years after ISKCON has been founded. To a disciple in Los Angeles who asked him some questions, little basic questions. And here's what Srila Prabhupada sent to him. Is, this was on June 16, 1966. Seven, excuse me. The main thing is that whatever is cooked for Krishna and offered to the Lord, everything should be done very respect, respectfully and cleanly prepared and offered. You should offer everything in a very clean and pure manner. So that means different things to different people, what clean and pure manner means. So Srila Prabhupada is now going to help us to understand what that means in the simplest terms. Krishna is neither hungry nor is Krishna poor, nor is he unable to eat, but he will accept everything, the foods mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, when it is offered to him with three things. Love, devotion, and faith. So we could take this simple sentence and no matter how advanced you are or how long you have practiced Krishna consciousness, we can go deeper into the purport and the meaning of these three things. Love, devotion, and faith. There is no end to the depths of this simple statement. 
Srila Prabhupada once said to me that Srimati Radharani is expert in everything. In Braj Bhumi and Braj Dham, there is no one who pleases Krishna more. She is most expert for her dancing. But she pleases Krishna with her cooking. And every day, with every time she cooks for Krishna, she never makes the same thing twice. This is eternally something that Srimati Radharani is doing for the pleasure of Krishna. Eternally. So we see what expertise means, we see what love, faith and devotion means through Radharani's service to Krishna in this one capacity, just one thing of which she is expert in everything. So vast is this vehicle for serving the senses of the Lord. All right. Talking within the kitchen should be done only at what is necessary for the preparation of prasadam or about the Lord. When you cooked to Srila Prabhupada, he did not chat. There was no conversation. For instruction, there was question and answer, but not other than that. To watch Srila Prabhupada in the kitchen was like uh, watching a true artist how he used his hands was extraordinary. I had never seen anyone bray, knead, chop, whip, do so many things with movements in his hands. Uh, he was extremely efficient. Once in Vrindavan in the late time of 1976, in a time when his very close uh, godbrother Bhagatji was cooking for him, Srila Prabhupada said that uh, he could cook for 30 people on one burner in one half hour a meal. And the person challenged him and said, that's not possible. And Prabhupada said, do you want to see me do it? And he backed down and said, no, Srila Prabhupada, I believe you. He was so very expert that he taught by example. He never told us to do something that he couldn't do himself, very expertly. He learned to cook by watching others, not in a brahmachari ashram. Most specifically, he said his mother and his auntie he learned cooking from, and by watching street vendors. He said he learned a great deal from watching them as well. There are certain rules that must be followed. No offered food should be brought back into the kitchen. This offered food uh, is a practice in your country, but in temples or in homes of the Krishna conscious person, one should never indulge in such an unclean habit. If there is any leftover food, it must be kept separately. So there's so many examples I could give of Srila Prabhupada with this. One was at uh, the estate of John Lennon in Prabhupada's service. And it was a, what we call a no facility zone when you're traveling with Srila Prabhupada and you're placed in a situation where it isn't a Vaishnav kitchen, neither are there Vaishnavas to uh, help with the standard of cleanliness. This was a... Uh, the servants' quarters to a very big estate. There was no facility. And he saw his brahmachari assistant, uh, Purushottam Prabhu, he saw him bringing some food back. Now this is, Iskhan is three years old now. Srila Prabhupada wrote this letter in 1967 and he expected that, that every one of his disciples by this time would know this standard and would make arrangements no matter what or how simple that arrangements should be made. So it doesn't need to be complex, simply there's a line. This is for offered prashad, this is for unoffered prashad. What is in the difficulty of following kitchen rules? They are rules, they are simple rules, and they must be followed. 
one must be prepared to follow rules for Krishna. Otherwise, where is the proof that one loves Krishna? We come into the love aspect again. If we're not willing to follow rules, where is love? And besides that, these rules are not difficult to follow. Srila Prabhupada made the art of and the practice of Krishna consciousness so enticing and so salient and so accessible that it became attractive for any person that really was willing to listen to it. Just like you're coming as a guest today.